So here's a great uh, video about early childhood and math geometry. And you know, all these um, videos are at this website, but you know, I got to this website by going to ed.gov. And so I wanted to really give people something so that they understand, you know, what the concept of education is. And it can't be all behavior. It can't be all, you know, for, for people of color or for children whose family line was formerly enslaved or however you want to say it, ADOS, children of African descendants of slaves, because that's who we are. And we can recognize that. And we can also understand that we were given the opportunity to have a free and appropriate public education. But what you don't understand is if that education was promised, it could be a behavior mod modification according to the state. And so it just depends on what state you live in, how many resources you actually have access to. But you know, it's up to you because life is always about what you're willing to do or what you're willing to strive to accomplish. So let's start this video and then I'll end it. So it won't be that long, but you know, then I can upload a few more. Here we go. Welcome to a brief discussion on how to support teaching geometry, measurement, patterns, and data to young eight children, age two through grade three. That using the developmental progression from the IES practice so, guide. So, you know, if you're not thinking about how the children are going to learn at age Let's two. get started. There are five recommendations in the practice guide, and all are based on a systematic review of research conducted by researchers and practitioners with expertise and experience in early math development. We will discuss recommendation two, which suggests that we teach children geometry, patterns, measurement, and data analysis through a developmental progression. So what do we mean by teaching children through a developmental progression? In order to effectively instruct students and support them in moving to the next step in the progression, teachers must know what skills children already possess. A developmental progression is simply a sequence of learning that provides teachers with information on what those steps along the path are. Developmental progressions exist for many math topics. However, for recommendation two in the practice guide, expert researchers and practitioners present the four topics of geometry, patterns, measurement, and data analysis in their brief developmental progressions. The first progression discussed under recommendation two is geometry. When teaching the developmental progression, we want to help children recognize, name, and compare shapes, and then teach them to combine and separate shapes. First in the progression is to recognize shapes. It's important to help children do so in their everyday environment. Take children on shape walks and ask them to point out the shapes that they see or ask children to bring in things from home that illustrate a particular shape or to find and name shapes in the classroom. As children more confidently recognize shapes, provide opportunities for them to name and describe the shapes using their critical attributes. A critical attribute is a characteristic shared by all examples of the shape. For instance, we would like children to eventually define rectangles as having four sides with the opposite sides equal and parallel. Although many rectangles have two long sides and two short sides, some do not. Therefore, having two long sides and two short sides is not a critical attribute of a rectangle. Additionally, squares share all the critical attributes of a rectangle but have the additional critical attribute of four equal sides, so squares are actually a special type of rectangle. To support a deeper and more accurate understanding of shapes, children need to be exposed to both examples and non-examples of shapes for comparison. A non-example of shape lacks one or more critical attributes that define the shape. For example, a rhombus is a non-example of a triangle because it has four sides instead of three. Additionally, Children need to see different examples and orientations of the shape. For example, 
most children see horizontal right angle triangle, but seldom see the same image flip vertically. Next, children can explore how shapes can be combined and separated to form new shapes. When children manipulate shapes, they learn that changes in orientation do not affect the critical attributes of the shapes. As they practice combining shapes, it is an opportunity for children to learn about spatial vocabulary, such as in, on, under, beside, above, or below. Playing games such as the shapes game from the practice guide supports children in learning spatial relations and shape combinations. Patterns are the second developmental progression under recommendation two. Specifically, the recommendation is to encourage children to look for and identify patterns and then teach them to extend, correct, and create patterns. First, children can experiment with basic repeating patterns. For example, have the class line up to go outside in a pattern such as boy, girl, boy, girl. As children become familiar with simple AB, AB patterns, they can experiment with more complex ones such as girl, girl, boy, boy, or AA, BB. Ask children to find patterns in the classroom around themselves. They may point out stripes on their clothes, designs in rugs, or bricks on the sides of buildings. Next, help children learn to extend patterns. Colored beads are helpful to experiment with how patterns work because they are easily manipulated. Teachers can create a simple ABAB pattern with different colored beads on a string or a stick and then ask children what comes next. As a challenge, create an error to the pattern and ask children to correct it. Adding more colors or beads of different shapes and sizes will also make this task more challenging. Measurement is the third developmental progression shared under recommendation two. To promote children's understanding of measurement, the progression begins by teaching them to make direct comparisons and to use both informal or non-standard and formal or standard units and tools. Children can begin to compare objects for the purpose of sorting, arranging, and classifying them. For example, children can begin to compare the length of two pieces of yarn to determine which one is shorter or longer. Then expand on this concept by demonstrating how to arrange pieces of yarn from shortest to longest. Encourage children to use measurement vocabulary words that describe the characteristics of the objects and the differences between them as they make their comparisons. Next, children need opportunities to measure objects using non-standard tools and informal units like classroom items such as markers, blocks, or books. Children will learn to give numerical values to the non-standard items they are using to measure. Eventually, they will use standard measurement tools like rulers and apply measurement concepts. Data analysis is the fourth developmental progression under recommendation two. This progression recommends begin by helping children collect and organize information and then teach them to represent that information graphically. Teachers can provide children with opportunities to count and sort familiar items like beads, blocks, or snacks. A good time to introduce sorting exercises is when children are putting away toys that they must sort into the appropriate bins. If children are interested in drawing, they can sort different color crayons or crayons versus other writing utensils. Graphs are a great way for children to practice organizing the information they sorted visually. Start by introducing how to graph with simple tally marks or pictures, and then interpret the meaning of the graphs. Try creating classroom graphs that describe different characteristics of children in the class, such as their hair color or favorite foods. For further information related to teaching math to young children, Please take some time to review the full practice guide. Also, 
visit the RAL Central website for more education research and resources to support schools and student outcomes. So that was a great video and um, I'm going to pause this right here.